Haggai chapter 1. The book of Haggai has only two chapters because it, it has one subject, building the house of God, one subject. So there are no other subjects. So when that subject was exhausted, so it was done. Can we go there? <clears throat> the book of Haggai chapter 1. So are your TVs freezing today? Okay. I just see a rainbow of some kind. I don't know what's happening. Oh, maybe I should read it from me here so that we may move quicker. Are you there? And the angel of the Lord who talked with me. This is, uh, no, no, no. This is, I, I mean, I'm somewhere now. This is not Haggai. This is Zachariah. You, um, yeah. Okay. In the second year of Darius, the king, the king, in the sixth month of the first day of the month of, uh, of, the, of the month, the word of the Lord came by Haggai the prophet to Zerubbabel, the son of Shetiel, governor of Judah, to Joshua, the son of Jehozadak, the high priest, saying, this is what the Lord, the Lord of hosts, uh, this is what the Lord of hosts has spoken, saying, these, these people say, the time has not come, the time for building the Lord's house. Then the word of the Lord came by Haggai, the prophet, saying, is, is it time for you, is it time for you yourselves to live in your paneled houses. And this house is in ruins. Now therefore, says the Lord, the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. You have sown much, but you have harvest little. You eat, but do not have enough. You drink, but never have your fill. You clothe yourselves, but no one is warm. And the wage earner earns wages to put it into a bag with holes. Thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Go up to the mountain. Somebody say, go up to the mountain. Go out to the mountain, bring timber and build the house and do what and build the house i will take pleasure in it i will take pleasure how did how didn't i see that verse man that's powerful i will take pleasure in it and i will be glorified says the lord you looked for much for much and see it came to little when you brought it home I blew on it. Why, says the Lord, because, says the Lord of hosts, because of my house, which lies in ruins, while every one of you runs his own house. Did you hear that? Hey, God is complaining. I've never heard God complaining like this in the whole Bible. He's really whining and complaining. You guys are living well and look at my house and you know, you know. What verse are we on? Okay, our own house, right? Therefore, the heavens above, above you withhold the dew and the earth withholds her fruit. And I called for a drought on the land and on the mountains, on the grain and on the new wine and on the oil and on that and and all on all that the ground produces and on men and on cattle and on all the labor of your hands verse 12 and Zerubbabel the son of Sheti Sheltiel and Joshua the son of Jehozadak the priest 
with all the rest of the people obeyed the voice of the Lord their God and the words of Haggai the prophet because the Lord their God had sent him and the people feared the Lord last verse and Haggai the Lord's messenger spoke to the Lord spoke the Lord's message to the people saying I am with you says the Lord and the Lord stirred up the spirit somebody say the Lord stirred up the spirit the Lord stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel the son of Shittel and governor of Judah and the spirit of Joshua the son of Jehozadak uh, the, son, the, the, the high priest and the spirit of all of uh, the, the spirit of all the rest of the people and came and they came to work on the house of the Lord all of them came to work on the house of the Lord of hosts they are God all of them responded on the 24th day of the sixth month in the second year of Darius the king this is how they used to state the date I don't understand what they say but praise God father thank you for your word speak to us in Jesus name amen now, one thing, I'm not sure, that was a long read. I thought it was going to be short. I, I want you to understand that in the Bible, when we talk about building, we talk about different things. Here, in the book of Haggai, when they talk about building, they talk about timber, wood. They talk about stones. They talk about mortar. They talk about cement and all of those things, right? So that's the building, physical building. But when Jesus said, on this rock, I will build my church. He was not speaking about walls, but he uses the same word, build. Can you see that? So God says here, build my house, right? And Jesus says, upon this rock, I will build my house. So, but he was talking about people, the church, the people. But the building process is almost the same. Why? Whether you build the physical building or you build the people. Building takes strength from the person who builds. Are you hearing that? So now, I'm starting with you the series that the Lord, I think the Lord challenged me in the morning when I was in the bathroom. I don't know what does God have to do with bathroom because he does not wash. I know if there's God who does not wash, it's God. Do you think God has a bathroom in heaven? Huh? No, bathroom is for us. It's for earth. Amen. God is clean from the time. I don't know from the time. He has been always there. All these years. Now look at this place. How wonderful it will be for you just to be clean for all the time. You don't need to go anywhere. You're just good. You know. No, God is, God is sharp. He's good. So, then the Lord began to speak to me this. He said, Church tell the people challenge them preach on church growth challenge somebody say church growth challenge church growth challenge God wants his church to grow God is not just satisfied that you are here and you come every Sunday and you are good and you know you know each other and things like that. He, he never died for us just to have good time together every Sunday. The church has to win the souls. The church has to win people. There has to be people who get delivered, people who get saved, people who get, you know, whatever that the Lord has prepared for them. So, growth challenge. Then say, growth, say, say church growth challenge. And say this, it's time to build God's house. Then you say, neighbor monitor your works in the house of God. So you monitor, how are you doing? How are you doing in the house of God? Uh, no, I don't mean your house. Your house is provided for. Your house has microwave, your house has, uh, has uh, what is this thing, this steam, steam, steam thinning, this, this air cook thing. What's that thing? Yeah, that thing. <laughs> you 
It blowed my potatoes dry yesterday. Shoo. I wanted to put water. I said, no, no water. Only air. I said, you see? Now, look at this, please. So, God, you have to monitor your work. If you are in the church, you have to do self-introspection on how you're doing. And sometimes, if you are complacent, you have to be real with yourself. And sometimes when you rob, you should be real with yourself. And sometimes when you are too relaxed, you should be real with yourself. Sometimes if you're just a don't care believer, you just come to church because there are those who are like that. You have also to be real. You have to check where you are. You know, how is my contribution to the church? How is my work in the church? Am I proud of it? Should I improve myself? Am I, am I more relaxed? Am I on the monotone? You know monotone? You know, the people who are on the monotone. You do the same thing. Oh, that's monotone. Maybe it's the wrong word. Maybe say, let's say plateau or something. Huh? On the plateau, you know, you do the same thing all the time. You give the same way every time, every time, for five years. It has never changed. It's just, it's just, every time it's free offering, you come with 10 rand. You've been giving 10 rand for, for every time since you have known yourself going to church all the time. Are you getting that? Uh, uh, I, I'm not saying, I'm not criticizing you. I'm saying that it's important for you to grow. It's just important for you to grow. Well, it's important for you to grow. Now, look at this, please. Let's check what God is saying to the people. I think to the people of, I think it's the people of Judah. Uh, let's say all of them are Israelites anyway. Let's say they're to the Israelites, right? So God is complaining about the, uh, is complaining to his people about the evidence of the works, about the evidence of the works of his people in his house. He does not see the evidence of their work. But he sees the evidence of their work in their own houses. You see that? But God says, I, I'm looking at your houses and, and I'm looking at my house and I want to match. And I, there's no match. You guys seem to be excelling with your houses. You are excelling with your children, you are excelling with your careers, you are excelling with your whatever, upgrading yourself, but uh, there are some things in my house that are not upgraded as your house. I'm not sure if you understand me, please. You see, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know how can I put the heart of God into your heart. You see, to the point that you come into the house of God, you look at the carpet, you say, no, it's, mm, it's not like, mm, like the carpet of my house, and you get worried. Huh? You come into the house of God, you check certain things, comparing with your house, and then you get upset. David checked his house, and then checked where Israel was worshiping God. And then he got worried. He was in the beautiful palace. Then he got upset in the beautiful palace because he says, God is worshipped in the tent. And I'm living in a wonderful, expensive palace. Can you come to the point where your own success is challenging you in comparison to the work of God? Oh, but I know this generation don't worry. This generation, they don't care. They just, just don't care. They care about shoes. They care about how they look. They care about their studies. They care about developing themselves. They care about getting married. They are whining about everything. But they, 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 they don't just... They, the house of God is not the priority. So when... She, oh, my God. I, I need to be nice to you because I've been away for a long time. How can I say this? No, please, let me fry you. Just say I'm your, we, we, we are yours. Fry us the way you want, please, okay? No. no, don't worry. I will fry you. Then at the end, I'll put some spices, please, okay? Yeah. So for now, just take the heat for now, but uh, the aromat is going to come at the end. Don't worry. You see that? Because we are living in a time where people are heartless. 
They worship God, but they are heartless. They worship God, but they are full of self-desires. And when you trace the desires, there is no kingdom of God there. But Jesus said, seek the kingdom of God first. Seek the kingdom of God before the decree. Seek the kingdom of God before marriage. Seek the kingdom of God before anything that you desire. But prioritize the God first and his kingdom first. Then it says, all that you want, it's not wrong to want what you want. It's not wrong to develop yourself. But it is wrong as a child of God to develop yourself and your house at the expense of God's house. So God is complaining. You know, if you check here, really the people, they are not poor. He says, you lived in paneled houses. You know, that was the, the Bishop Scots of their time. That was the Mshanga reach of their time, you see. No, but it, they are not really poor. You know, they are fairly making it in life. But God is grieved. You know, God is what? Is grieved. Then God uses the metaphor, the metaphor. He says that you have sown much, but you harvested little. You eat, but you don't have enough. You drink, but you never have your fill. It means that your thirst is not quenched. You clothe yourselves, but no one is warm. In other words, says, God says that you are not satisfied as you should. You thought, if I work, then I will be fine. But you work, but you still, there's a long way to go. There's a conflict of desires. You see that? I'm not sure you understand what I'm trying to say. You thought when I get that car, oh my God, when I drive it, oh, you imagine yourself. And then you got it. Now you have it. So what? Are you hearing this? Then it says that those who earn wages, it says they earn wages to put wages into the bags with holes. So to the Israelites, he's saying that I don't keep your money. God is a keeper. God can help you to do more with less. I remember when we started the first church in Guguletu, then there was a, a woman, and then in fact, I even know her name, the church started in her, in her house, Usis Togo. She had a 50 rand, 50 rand of electricity. It went for about four months to six months, 50 rand. And, 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 and she called me in the house and she said, I don't know what is happening. And she said, I even called the ESCOM people. They checked everything. They said, don't waste our time. Everything is okay here on the electric box. Because she was, that woman was a giver. That woman was buying me suits. She was a domestic worker, but she was dressing me. Uh, you don't understand what I'm trying to say to you. Are you hearing me? She was dressing me. Not only me, there was still Tepo only at that time. She was dressing Tepo. We did not buy much clothes for Tepo because she was in church. But she did not end there, but she made sure that I have suits that I wear when I preach. When I had none, I was supported by the domestic worker. And then God gave her the 50 rand electricity for six months. Oh, man. Uh, don't play with me. I've seen over the years this thing works. This giving thing. I'm telling you. I've tested it and I've seen it. It works. I have testimonies and testimonies and testimonies. This thing works. Let's check the things that God is outlining to them. The first thing is the timing issue. Somebody say the timing issue. So God speaks about the timing. Every ladies and gentlemen, every time when God is challenging people to do things, sometimes there's a clash of time, the clash of what you want to do and what God wants to do. Sometimes you feel that, no, it's not yet time. Sometimes you look at your bank account and say, not yet time. Sometimes you look at your plans and say, mm, uh, uh. Uh -uh. Remember, 
it is not just God who's speaking to them like with a loud voice, you know, uh, my children. No, no, no. It, it is Haggai, the prophet, the messenger. He's speaking to them. And the Bible says they obeyed Haggai, the prophet. I'm your prophet this morning, Prophet Fino. Uh -huh. This morning. Okay. Sounds strange. Prophet Fino, what's that? No, but for today, not for today, no, no. You can call me Prophet Fido as you're seated down. Once the service is finished, that title is finished. Don't, 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 uh, don't, don't continue with it. Then God says, speaks the timing issue, time issue. Then God says, this is what the Lord of hosts has spoken. Saying, these people are saying, the time has not come for the building of the Lord's house. Sure. It's not God who says the time has not come. It's people who are occupied with their things. Are you getting this? It's people. God never said it's not yet time. In fact, God has left them, has left the project to their discretion. Do you know how many years they, they built a foundation? Do you know they, they, how, how many years the foundation stayed? 20 years. The foundation stayed built 20 years, no walls. When God leaves things to us, we mess up. You know why? Because it's never time. I always have something to pay for. I always plan for my whole money. So now when you come, listen ladies and gentlemen, even when you come to my finances now, I am planning what the things that I want to do. So when God wants me to give uh, 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 he does not want me to give from extra. He wants me to give from one of my projects and stop something in my life in order to give to him. This is what it means to give to God. Otherwise, you will never give. You will only be a tither, tither, tither. And you say, I'm a tither, I'm a tither, I'm a tither. And nothing else. God says, bring the tithe and offerings on my house. Not just the tithe, but an offerings on my house. So you get it. So they say the time is not. Oh, can I tell you something? There will never be a, a right time for you to build God's house. There will never be a right time. The flesh will not allow. It's the spirit that says it's time. But the flesh will say, nah, uh -uh. Uh -uh. you know, the petrol has gone high. There's always reasons. All the time. So the people of Israel, they're struggling with their own personal reasons. Touch your neighbor and say, what is your reason? In the book of Nehemiah chapter 4 verse 10. Book of Nehemiah chapter 4 verse 10. Look at what the Bible says. They are experiencing the same. Remember that Nehemiah was called not to build the house but to build the walls. You remember that? How many of you remember that? To build what? The walls. Building is building. Yes, walls of the city. But look what they faced. Look, they, they were faced with a time issue. Oh, oh, the Bible person, I thought the Bible person is there, man. Nehemiah chapter 4 verse 10, it's easy, man. You know, Nehemiah chapter 4. So in Nehemiah chapter 4 verse 10, look at what, and Judah said, you know, Judah said, the strength of the laborers is failing. The strength of what? Of the laborers is what? There is no much r r rubbish uh, oh God, uh, it's, it's, it's rubbish. Oh, this English, um, yeah, it's rubbish. But mine said rubble. Mine, mine is a civilized one. It says rubble. <laughs> Does it sound good to you if I say rubbish? It's okay. There's not much rubbish. You, you get, you guys are too English. For me, you say rubbish. It's like somebody says nonsense. 
I used to have, I used to have my sister, Sandra, Indian, Indian, says she's Indian. She's speaking Indian English from birth. So when I speak to her, if something does not make sense, she will say, Fee, no, nonsense. Yeah, I will sweat. I said, huh? What, what, what are you saying? She said, nonsense. You say to me, nonsense? She said, what you are saying does not make sense. I said, say it, it does not make sense. Don't say nonsense to me. Because I grew up, how many of you grew up with nonsense in your house? Nonsense. Nonsense, you know? So, uh, I guess rubbish, it's a, it's, a, it's a right word, but where I come from, rubbish is something else. But, uh, <laughs> where, where, where is rubbish now? Oh, sorry. Okay, this, it's okay, keep that one, keep that one. Meanwhile, the people of Judah said, the strength of the laborers is giving out, the, is failing, right? And there is no rubble, you know rubble? what they put on the stage when they were working, so Harvard knows better about that, that we cannot build the wall. We, we cannot build the wall. Can you see? Can you see that when you, when, when you get involved in God's project, there will be some discouragements? I, I'm telling you, when, when you get, you know, you know when you say, when you say, you say this time, I, I'm going to give, I'm going to increase, I'm going to, uh, 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 uh. get ready, get ready, Get ready for challenges. The enemy will not let you to prioritize God's house. I want you to understand. It will be easy to buy your shoes of 1,005 than to give 1,005 to the Lord. I, I, I'm telling you. So there will be a challenge all the time. So in the, in the time of Nehemiah, they are having a challenge. Judah says, no, our strength is failing, you know. There's not even enough material to build. No, no enough. There's no enough resources. Ladies and gentlemen, God does not say we must give just because we have enough resources. God does not say that we must build just because we have enough resources. It's not about enough resources, but it's about responding to the call of God. No matter how many or how few we are, but responding to the call of God, that's what makes a difference. Touch your neighbor and say, respond. If you start counting now, huh, you see now, one of the things, if you want to respond to God, don't start counting. You start counting your electricity bill, you say, my rent. <laughs> the more you count, the more your strength fails. You don't count, you obey. Did you hear what I said to you? You don't count, you do what? Then the second point that God challenged them with, it's not just timing, but God challenged them, number two, with their lifestyle. He challenged them with their lifestyle. So we get here a life, lifestyle challenged with the people of Israel. Lifestyle challenged. I, got, I thought God wants me to look good. I thought God wants me to smell good and not smell like fish, you know. I thought God wants me to represent him well. But at the same time, God will challenge my lifestyle. At the same time, God will challenge my spending. Because sometimes we may not trace our spending very well. Right? So in verses 4, Haggai chapter 1 verses 4, look at what the Lord says. Is it time for, your, for you yourselves to live in paneled houses? And this house is in ruins. Is it time for you to eat at Woolworths? Because some of us are eating at Woolworths and we have nothing to do with Woolworths. It is just that lifestyle, standard, and class. A 
And some of us are fascinated with brands. We've got shops where we say we don't go. Even when the business people can rob us and take the clothes from the same supplier of the shops we don't want and just put their... Then we run for the same thing. The difference I bought it from... When I did a research, I just wondered the amazing thing in China. The companies that are are, are sewing clothes for brands and they're also sewing clothes for non-brand same company sometimes they swap materials the same but the other one gets more prestige and recognition because of the brand huh? sometimes we don't know business yeah the business will do anything to attract us you see that? Now, God says, is it time for you to live in your panel houses? God says, why is your house so tops, but my house is under? I wonder if there's anybody who's got a, a heart for the house of God in this house. 2 Samuel chapter 7 verse 2. 2 Samuel chapter 7 verse 2. David gets shaken in the palace. He says, The king said to Nathan, the prophet, See now, I live in a house of cedar. You know cedar? Cedar trees, cedar trees were the most expensive. You wouldn't find it with, listen, you wouldn't find it with middle class people. You wouldn't find it with middle class people. Say the tree was expensive. He says that now, see, I live in a house of cedar, but the ark of God dwells within the tent. Within the tent curtains. David is not happy. David is not happy that the house of God looks lesser when it comes to beauty, when it comes to standard of life, lesser than his own house. He's not happy. You know, there are churches who are pastors who are blessing houses every month. Oh, wonderful, holding lunches. With people, which, which is not a good, uh, which is a good thing, because you want we want people to be to be successful. But if you do that for ten years and twenty years, and you are still renting, people are continuing to own and own houses and own lands and own everything, own everything. But God is owning nothing. God is still in the class. God is still in the. In the halls, God still is still in the rented places. Because, ladies and gentlemen, the place that is rented does not belong to God; it belongs to the landlord. Did you hear what I said to you? The place that is rented belongs to. It belongs to the landlord. Yes, you can call it the whole the. the God's house, because it feels like that when you feel the power. But the truth of the matter, the landlord can come with a key and switch off that power you feel. <laughs> While you are still saying, it happened to us in Makaza. While you are saying, they came with big chains, big chains. And big lockers. When they lock that thing, you feel like the presence is living. <laughs> so God challenged 
their lifestyle. Oh God, I was not preaching in Natal. I was teaching. Even yesterday I was teaching. So I think the teaching is too much is coming. Uh, preaching is a little bit these days. Yeah. But are you getting something of what I'm saying? So David is worried. Why do my house look expensive more than the house of God? Why have I invested so much in myself that I left God out? Number three. Number three, God reveals his heart that he wants to accelerate them. You know? Then he tells them that you are not satisfied with your progress. I think I, I, I touched this one that you, you, you drink, but you don't, you don't, the thirst is not going away. You put on clothes, but you are not warm. You know, you put blanket at night, but you are not warm. It does not mean that literally when, the, when it was winter, when they put blankets, they were not warm. God was pointing to something more than that, that they are living a purposeless life. Ladies and gentlemen, do you know that you can be successful and still be purposeless? Do you know that? You can be successful and still be purposeless. There are so many moneyed, purposeless people. I don't want to be like that. Because when you die, I can tell you the truth, when you die, people don't care how much your, your, your shoes cost. They don't care how, what, what, what type of a car you drive. They don't say, you see these cops, this one was driving a... <laughs> no, 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 it's not like that. You know, you see these feet were, were wearing from, you know, Louis Vuitton and Gucci. But no, 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 they, they, they forget, they forget all the, they forget all the achievements. They forget what will mean a lot to the people is the ministry and the purpose that you lived. Are you hearing that? So when you happen one day to die in the church, we shouldn't, we'll just be better you, as we just say, the only thing we can say, he was a nice brother, he was nice, he was nice. He was nice. And everybody, everybody was speaking, he said he was nice, 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 nice. Can, 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 can you, look man, you mean you come to earth just to live a nice life? Your friends say you are nice. At church, they say we are nice. And, and that's where we end. <laughs> nice. I remember his smile. Smile for, you came to smile on earth. You see that? So God is challenging them. God says that I want to accelerate you. I want to accelerate you beyond the blankets, beyond the food, beyond the, beyond the, beyond the drinking, beyond the thirst. I want to, I want, I want to take you higher. That's what God was trying to communicate to them. And then also, also in Haggai chapter 9, chapter, chapter 1 verse 9, chapter 1 verse 9, the Bible says, you looked for much and you see, I, it came to little. So God says now, your achievements are frustrated. You know you've got ability to achieve this thing, but it takes you years to do it. So he's saying that, your abilities are compromised as the results of you compromising my house. So you know that with this thing, you, you, you take one year, but you, you are on the third year trying to do the same thing. I wish I could talk to you. Are you hearing me? Ladies and gentlemen, that is possible. That is possible. You can be on the fifth year trusting God for a simple thing that other people don't even pray for. They have it, you are praying for it, and you don't have it. I wish I could talk to you. Are you hearing me? Because, because when you are involved in God's house, you don't pray for yourself. God takes care of you. I was... I learned... This year, I shifted my giving. Now, it's amazing when you do that, especially to God, the servants of God and things like that, then God begins to shift you. Are you hearing me? Yeah, I will tell you one day the things that I am busy doing now, not because I prayed for those things, 
but because I set myself. So, God says that you looked for much. Looking for much, it means that you are an achiever. Huh? You want to see your life moving to another level. You, you expected much. But see, it turned out to be little. Can I tell you? Do you know that you can, give a, you can live a blessed life and not see it? People say you are blessed. You, are, you just want a blessed way. You know why? Because your expectations are high. Sometimes you can have so much expectation that you forget to celebrate where you are. Sometimes you can be so looking, wanting, ambitious, wanting to see there, and you forget to enjoy here. He said that it turned out to be what? To be little. He said you brought home the things you brought home. God says, I blew it away. Remember, the people of Israel know that it's God who's doing everything. So that's it's their belief, the way they write, right? And he said, why? Why are these things all happening to you? And God declares the Lord, uh, Lord Almighty. He says, because of my house. It's because of my house. Hmm. What if... What I've been praying for for years is not happening, not because I'm cursed, just because of God's house. Just because that I've turned a blind eye to the things that I see in God's house and acted as if I don't see them. What if God wanted to trust me? But I said it was not yet time. Say so there's a timing issue. Uh, I said, you know, I, I don't have rubbish. You know, I need rubbish to work this thing. Hmm, you know. Number four. God pushed them to kingdom self-introspection. Kingdom. Somebody say kingdom. Self-introspection. Verse seven. Chapter one, Haggai, verse seven. Thus says the Lord of hosts. Consider your ways. Somebody say, consider your ways. This one says, give careful thought to your ways. Ladies and gentlemen, do not be satisfied with your activities, your giving, and your savings in the house of God. Be content, not satisfied. Because to be content, it means that I celebrate what I've done, but I'm stretching myself for more. But being satisfied can be complacent, relaxed, stretching my feet and say, I've done well, tapping myself on the shoulder. So God says, consider your ways. In other words, do a self-introspection. In the book of Lamentation, chapter 3, verse, verse 40, Lamentations chapter 3 verse 40. The Bible says, let us search and examine our ways and turn back to the Lord. Examine our ways. What does it mean to turn back to the Lord? It means that and turn back to God's agenda. And turn back to what God is demanding and calling us to do at this hour. And be on the cutting edge of the will of God. And work where God works. And work where God works. Okay, let me move faster. Number five. God challenged them now with kingdom sacrifice. Somebody say kingdom sacrifice. I sound like a lecturer this morning. A shouting lecturer. Uh, kingdom sacrifice. Somebody say kingdom sacrifice. Some way, somehow, when you walk with God, God will demand sacrifice from you. If you walk with God, he will demand sacrifice from you. Abraham, Genesis 22 verse 1. Go give your son, the son that you love. Give him as a burnt offering to me. Give your son, not Ishmael, Isaac, the one that you love the most. It's a challenge. It's a king. 
a kingdom sacrifice. Now, the kingdom sacrifice means that leave everything you have been doing or planned and concentrate on my house. I will repay you. I will bless you. God says if you do that, he says I will take pleasure. Do you know that when the God takes pleasure, God releases the blessing. When God is excited, he releases the blessing. When God takes pleasure, things begin to change. When God takes pleasure, the things that could not happen will begin to happen. When God takes pleasure, the breakthrough you have been looking for will begin to come. When God takes pleasure, what you have been praying for and struggling for for a long time will begin to happen. When God takes pleasure, then God provides. And some of us, we don't understand the language. God says, I will take pleasure when you do this. You know, look at this. Take pleasure. You know, when the kings before were excited. That's why they say that if you are too excited, don't make a promise. Because when you are excited, you can sell your whole house. And, and, and worry where you're going to sleep tomorrow. You remember Peter when they're on the mountain with Jesus? You remember? The Bible says that he was so excited when he saw Jesus being glorious and transfigured. When he saw Moses and saw Elijah and he said that let us make tents for you Lord and for Elijah and for Moses. And he forgot about himself. Excitement will make you suffer afterwards. People who get excited make mistakes. It's like people who are intoxicated. High in alcohol. The things in the morning, they say, oh, you are dancing naked. Oh, you, you. <laughs> you say me. <laughs> now, God says I will be excited. God says that I will take pleasure. Now, ladies and gentlemen, remember, let me talk about pleasure. When God takes pleasure or when the king takes pleasure. The Bible says that King Herod, the baby, the baby girl of King Herod after the princess, after she has been dancing, dancing. And the Bible says the father was impressed, impressed. You know what the father said? The father said to the baby, if you know the scripture, to the girl, said, uh, said, said uh, my child, you, you, have, you have, today, you have really washed my intestines. You know, he was very blessed, that, that excited. And he said, ask anything. You know what he added because of excitement? He said, even half of my kingdom. He says, if you ask me, the excitement. Huh? So when God is excited, that's why the word, the, the, the saying says of the song, when the praises go up, his blessings come down. When he receives the praise, receives the worship, receives the adoration, something will get loose. Something will come down. Something will come to your account. Something will come to your post box. Something, the proposal will come. Things will begin to turn when God is excited. When God... Yeah. When God takes pleasure, He will fix your marriage. When God takes pleasure, He will deliver your child from drugs. When God takes pleasure, are you from trying to say? In fact, David says, when God takes pleasure with a man, God says, he, he, David says, He gives him rest from all his enemies. Even when they want to attack him, but they cannot. Even when they want to kill him, but they cannot. Because when God takes pleasure with a man, peace becomes the result. Peace becomes a result. Let's serve him until he's excited. Let's serve him until he says, My children, well done, my children. Let's make his house glorious. Let's make his house to be the pinnacle of the world. Like the temple of Solomon, where kings will come from their countries to look at the house of God. When the queen of Sheba will come from the country to look at the house of God. Can we make Cape Town to wander? Can we make some sinners to come to church just to look at the beauty? Because there's no difference between the bank and the 
church because the church has lifted the standard you go to the bank there's excellence you come to the church there's excellence you go to the bank there's econ you come to the church there's econ God is calling them to sacrifice. He is calling them to sacrifice. Sacrifice, it means that you have a plan for this. But because God wants it, you give it to him. It means that you have savings for this. But because God wants it, then you decide and you say, Are you what I'm trying to say to you? I remember when we, I gave the money that I have received. I mean hundreds of thousands I gave to the Lord when, 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 uh, to the Lord because God wanted it and, 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 and for years I've been serving for the house and, and then God wanted it and I gave it to God and it looked like it looked like did you hear what I'm saying to you? it looked like I lost but now when I check what God has given me and I've checked that what God has given me some people pay 20 years but I only pay 2-3 years for that I'm, I'm, I'm speaking as I, I almost said I'm speaking in rebels it was a it, in our riddles now not rebels not, not rubbish you know It looked at it, it was a waste. But God knows how to reward. And God does not forget. The Bible says God is not unjust that he should forget the labor, your labor of love. There's nothing you lose with God. There's nothing you lose with God. So he challenged them. This is the kingdom, kingdom sacrifice. They had to sacrifice. Now if you check verses... Uh, uh, ch chapter 1 verse 8 of Haggai God says to them go to, go to the mountain somebody say go to the mountain mm. Mm. go to where he says go to the mountain go to the mountain ladies and gentlemen people before when they build their houses they would go to the mountain for the materials of the house so these people have already gone for their own houses they've already climbed the mountain for their houses because their houses are paneled with great wood expensive wood the Lord says but now God says go up the mountain not for you this time go for me oh, I, I, I. I'm coming to Natal. I've been saying buffet all the time when I'm preaching to churches there. I, I, I don't know what happened. You know, <laughs> every time I preach, I'll say buffet and then all the, all the time. It's <laughs> this buffet thing. I don't know who. It sounds like an like MK thing. <clears throat> mm. <laughs> so now look at this, please. You go up the mountain, you sweat. You work, but at this time you are not the beneficiary. God is, but it's you that works. It's you that spends energy. It's you that wakes up in the morning. It's you that, that put petrol into the car. It's you that is at work at 8 o'clock. It's you that works over time, but now not for you. For you. I know God is speaking now. I'm saying not for you. You are sweating, but not for you. And this generation, they will tell you we have lives too. We have lives to live. It's not all about church. And me tell you, it's not all. Eh? And it's not all about church. Let me tell you something. When you come to the point where you separate church. From your life what are you trying to say now I'm not talking about the manipulative church and uh, scamming church no I'm talking about the pure church of the Lord Jesus Christ 
you, you, I'm just thinking, how can I separate my life from church? I've been a church boy ever since, even now. Everything I have, I'm not sure about you, me, there's no achievement without church. Not because I'm a pastor. I mean, from the time I got born again until now, I'm a product of the church. My mindset is a product of the church. It's a product of the teachings of the word of God in the church. So I can't look at church as that thing. It's just, it's impossible to do that. So God is calling them to the, to the kingdom sacrifice. Uh, you see now, I'm teaching really, because when I'm preaching, I just move. But now, I need to go back and check. So God says, go to the mountain. He says, go to the mountain and do what? And bring wood and build the temple. Right? That I may take pleasure in it and be glorified, says the Lord. When we take ourselves out of the equation and put God, that's where he can be glorified. You mean God, you take pleasure that I work and sweat and sweat and then bring it to you. Oh, this Facebook will mess me up if they hear that I've worked and brought it all to you. <laughs> hey, I'm telling you. Hey. God is challenging us to do, you know, you know, there's this thing we used to do in October. We've never done it here. Yeah, but we may try it. Where we go to the mountain and then come and bring it all to God. Ah, do you know what it does? I know I've been a pastor. I've been a pastor since I was young in my 20s. When we did that, when we start the year as the church, the whole entire year's budget was covered and more. How wonderful would it be? Why will the church operate on the red all the time? Huh? I know the finances, they hear me now. Why operate on the red all the time? Why all the time we have to look to, okay, the month is the seventh today. We close everything the seventh. And people did not do well this time. We are still looking and maybe they will come. Maybe the, the ones who, who in the 15th will come. Oh, we're waiting for the 25th now. Well, guys, that's not life. The church should not live like that, man. Why don't we take one month and sacrifice and go to the mountain and bring all our salaries to God for that month? So that there will be food in, house, in the house of God. So that there will be resources in the house of God. So that the budget for the whole year will be covered. Why should the church live like a beggar? If the church lives like a beggar, it means that the people who are in the church, they are perceiving the church as beggary. In the times of Moses, when God said, build the house, he said, build, build, so that I can dwell among you, the tabernacle. The Bible says people brought the things until Moses says, mm -mm, whoa, 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 whoa. He said, whoa, whoa, I, whoa, stop. He said, it's enough. Oh, I would want to pastor that church, man. Yeah. Just imagine the returning people say, no, 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 no. We'll give this 20,000. No, no, just, I know. Go, go buy sweets for kids. <laughs> it's, it's, it's enough. It's enough. So we go to the mountain, not for ourselves now, but for God. You hear that? Psalms 132. I'm left with one point, all right? Psalms 132, verse 13 to 14. This is what David says. He says, for the Lord has chosen, has chosen Zion. He has desired it for his dwelling. He has desired the Zion for his dwelling, right? This is my resting place forever. Here I will dwell for I have desired it. It's God. He says that he will dwell in Zion. He desires to dwell amongst us. 
He desires to perform miracles amongst us, to supply amongst us. So when we create that dwelling place in the house of God, then God will dwell. The book of Exodus chapter 25, verse 8 to 9. Exodus 25, verse, uh, Exodus 25, verse 8 to 9. The Bible says, God speaking to Moses. He said, tell the people of Israel, let them make, a san- let, let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. Did you hear that? Let them make me what? A sanctuary. So if they've made a sanctuary, a sanctuary, <laughs> That I may, I will then dwell among them. Was not God with them? Is it not God who said, I will never leave you nor forsake you? What does he mean by dwell now? Are you hearing this? God means a different dimension of his presence. Where needs will be met. Are you hearing me? Continue. I'll dwell among them. Continue. He says, according to that, I show you that is the pattern of the tabernacle. The pattern of its furnishings. You know, you see, God is one's finisher. God wants the tabernacle furnishings. And just so you shall make it. Okay, continue. Let's continue to verse 10. They shall make an ark. Blah, 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 blah. And all of those things. Go to verses... Uh, Why do they say, God says they must go to the, take an offering for them. Is it verse 7 or verse 1? I don't know. Take the offering from the people of Israel. Now, what I'm trying to say to you, all these things, the sanctuary that God is, to, is speaking about, God stipulated the kind of giving they had to bring. He said, bring to me silver, gold, bronze, this and that. Okay, this is it. And this is the offering which you shall, we shall what? You shall take from them. Offering for what? For building the sanctuary. He says you shall take from them what? Gold, silver, bronze. You see? God mentioned, in fact, you go ahead, blue, purple, scarlet, thread, fine linen, goats, hair, blah, blah. All these things will come from the people of God. So don't you understand that everything in this house should come from you? Don't you understand that? Don't you understand when you criticize one thing, the mic is not working. No, why the mic is this? Why the mic is that? Don't you know that you are pointing to yourself? If you do that, then you do it out of, you don't have revelation of what the church is. Now, let me give you the last, uh, oh no. No, I'll give you next week this one. No, let me, What's this? Is, is it number six now or number seven? I'm going to, to what? Ladies and gentlemen, no, no, let me close it. I still have more notes, but yeah, you know, teaching, teaching is <laughs> teaching, you can teach for five hours, and uh, uh, preaching is a then it's good. You see? So now look at this, please. Here's the challenge. Here's the challenge. The church grows when people in the church grow and understand their purpose. Growth is not mistaken. Growth is not by chance. Are you hearing me? Growth is not by what? Yes, it's not a biological growth. Yeah. When you grow, you don't see it. I'm telling you. You grow, you don't see it. You know, like I was speaking with Tana. So he has a... He has a tendency. I don't know where did she get this name. This part of me here. He calls it the classic. I don't know what does that mean. Some of you understand. You... you uh, do you have some... Seven year olds here, maybe they understand what I'm talking about. I don't know. So he calls it the classic. He says that you can shave, but don't shave the classic, eh? All right? I don't know. I, I did not know what the classic is. I said, please, what is the classic? Then she had to point it. I was, oh, I said, oh, oh, I don't know what it was that. 
And then one day then she said, you, you know, people will leave the, what can I say, in the paper. If, if, I, if they say, if you put a dot here, <clears throat> a dot, in, we put a dot, a black dot, a small dot over there. Then we ask the people, what do you see? And say, what color is that? They will say black. Because they see that, but the more color there is white. Huh? Yeah. Black is a dot. But their attention will come to the dot. People can destroy your life and disown you for the dot. And forget all the white. That's how people are. So, so, <clears throat> and you get crazy. Just, just, just for, for the dot and get punished for the dot. You know. Now, and then she said to me, I said, you daddy, you, uh, uh, with your, with your white beard. I said, white? It's more black, Tana. Don't you see that I have more black than, it's not all white. I, I can't wait for all of it to be white, in fact. So, but, but you see, that's how people see things. People measure on the minors. And certain relationships get destroyed on the dot. People can keep you keep hatred against you for years because of the dot. All the white does not matter. You see? Now let's come, let's go and be encouraged. If you have not started tithing, please start. If you have stopped, begin. Begin again. Re-begin. Begin. Begin again. It's what? It says re-be, re-begin. <laughs> Begin again, all right? So please make sure that you are useful in the house of God. Make sure that you contribute. Make sure that you are proud of what you do in the house of God. Amen.